This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Valeria Tellez interviews Sean Conley, the author of The Point After, how one resilient kicker learned there was more to life than the NFL. A vivid account of life in the NFL and an inspiring story of everything that comes after. Against seemingly impossible odds, Sean Conley became the starting kicker for the University of Pittsburgh in his senior year. A year later, he suited up for the Detroit Lions. But when he joined the New York Jets soon after, Conley's injuries caught up to him, and his lifelong dream came crashing down in a crisis of denial and fear. The Point After is an all-access look at the NFL, one of the most intense workplaces in sports. Conley describes pushing through pain at NFL training camps, surrounded by rookies, all pro veterans, and long shot undrafted free agents, all hell bent on staying in the game. He recounts the insecurities he dealt with on and off the field, and the despair that overtook him when his career ended. But while Conley thought life was over, it was just the beginning. Transcending football, This is the story of an ex-football player who discovered the true meaning of sports and life and found happiness in the most unexpected way. Embodying the spirit of the underdog, this is a moving tale of strength, determination, and spiritual grit. Sean began practicing yoga as part of his rehabilitation and soon embraced yoga's mindfulness, meditation, and philosophy as a new life direction. Now a yoga teacher himself, he owns Amazing Yoga in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with his wife. Meet Sean on seanconley.net. Here is the interview with Sean Conley. In your own words, who is Sean Connolly? Mm, yeah, so, well, that's a great question because, you know, for most of my life, I thought I was a uh, professional football player. So from a very young age, age eight, actually, I started playing football all the time. And I had this this goal that I'd play in the NFL someday. And so I was very obsessed with with that goal and it, it consumed me. So for a big part of my life, that's... That's who I thought I was, was, was a football player. And I, I did, I did reach my goal after college. I signed in the NFL with the, with the Detroit lions. So that was, now I was a NFL football player. Um, however, I discovered after my career ended, you know, having some time to reflect and then eventually, uh, taking up the practice of yoga and meditation, um, I was able to, you know, let go of, you know, thinking that, you know, you know, m- m- my job was who I was or, or my, my dream, you know, of, of being an NFL football player was who I was. So I, th- I think who I am is, you know, what I think all of us are, which is, which is, which is limitless and, and, you know, being able to, you know, just be able to share and, and, and to love. And I know that maybe sounds like a little new agey, but I think, you know, the, um, you know, the more I learn about life is that, you know, we, we, we are here, our, 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 our greater purpose is, is beyond, you know, our, our, our day-to-day jobs. My follow-up question is um, success. How do you define success these days? What is to be successful to you? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, being successful is, is doing something in, in, in your work or even beyond your work that, 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 that helps others. 
Um, you know, we're lucky, my, my wife and I, that we have a, a job right now um, teaching yoga and meditation that our, our, our main mission is to just, is just to help people with, with their day-to-day lives and allow them just to find, find some headspace and whatever it is. And, you know, with everything going on right now with the pandemic, but we know that, you know, people have, you know, their, their, their problems and their challenges, you know, they're, they're, they had some before this all happened. And so, um, you know, I think success is just, you know, finding something, you know, that, that, that helps others. And, you know, that doesn't have to be their day-to-day job because that, you know, like, you know, for example, my father, you know, he was a security, security, um, guard and, you know, his, he, he wasn't able to maybe help so many people like with his job. And he certainly, he certainly did, but, you know, beyond that, he was just someone that would, you know, help the neighbors or, you know, help, you know, anyone else like, like a need. And so, um, you know, for me, that's what I think, you know, being successful can be or is. What do you think is the message that we will learn or we are learning from these challenges? And also, do you have a vision for a new or better reality? Yeah, that's such a great question. I I think there's, we're, we're all finding a lot of lessons in this. For ourselves, I think one thing that we're finding is just that that life can be more simple, you know, that we don't need all the things that we thought that we needed. And, you know, just you know, relationships, how, how important they are. You know, I think we're all discovering, you know, who the who our, who our true champions are in life that, that support us throughout all this. And so, um, you know, that all these things that we thought that we needed, you know, just, 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 you know, simplifying is, is, you know, can, can, we can still be happy with, you know, just keeping things basic. And um, I'm sorry, what was the, 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 the second question there? Yeah. The second was the vision. If you have any vision or ideas for a better reality after this. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I what we're, we're, we're trying to do like with, with our work right now um, is just helping people find time to just, you know, step away from the busyness. So I, I think our vision is before this all happened, you know, we are all in this, in this race of, of more, more, more busy, busy, busy. And I think now with the pandemic, we've been forced to slow down and, but even by slowing down, uh, there's still the stress, you know, of, of, you know, of the election and still watching, you know, with, with the numbers that are happening with the, with the, with the pandemic. But, you know, I, I, I think our vision is that, you know, people can find benefit from finding ways to take care of themselves that, you know, you know, you know, not just yoga, meditation, but, you know, spending more time in nature. I think, you know, with, with the current state, I found that it's, it's safe to be outside. So, a lot, a lot of people now are finding, you know, therapy in, in nature. So I think it's just going back to that. And yeah, you mentioned happiness. What is happiness to you? What makes you happy? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, I used to think that happiness was, was making myself happy, you know, going back to my obsession to be, be in the NFL. It was always about like, I'll be happy when, you know, I, you know, I, I sign a five-year contract in the NFL. I'll be happy when, you know, I make this much uh, money in the NFL. But now, you know, I look at it quite differently and I, I find my happiness when, you know, other people around me um, are happy. You know, at the same time, of course, you know, I still, you know, work on, you know, you know, my dreams, my personal and taking care of myself. But, you know, the the more I can see my family happy and friends and, you know, the people that come to our business, you know, that's that that's happiness for me. Another question I have with the open questions is uh, purpose and passion. Do you see a difference between these two words? And if you do, how do we know when we are living our purpose? We have found it. Yeah, that's such a great question. I, you know, I think our purpose is, you know, I believe is, is, is to, you know, to, to make others happy, to be kind to others. And I think our, our passion is something that we can actually accomplish our purpose through is, you know, by taking some time to think about like, what is something that we, that we, we really love to do. And, and then through that, 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 you know, we're working through our, our, our passions and or you know, doing our passions that we can, we can help others through that. What is the true meaning of sports to you these days? 
Yeah. So these, these days, you know, it is, uh, you know, whenever I watch sports now, I, I, am more interested in the backstory of, of each individual athlete, you know, even though I, I may not know it on there, but, um, I think the true nature for sports is, is just, is finding the lessons, uh, the individual lessons for that athlete throughout their 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 sports journey. Uh, as w- w- when I was growing up, I used to think that sports was like the end all be all. Like there could be nothing better than being a, a professional athlete, and I I put professional athletes like on the highest pedestal. But now, after going through that whole process and and the ups and downs that I had and the insecurities and and the lessons I learned, now I think for 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 sports, it's just. Um, almost like like anything in life that you know what what we can learn along along that journey. Knowing the story of the people behind is not different from anything, right, Sean? Like, um, yeah, knowing the stories behind of what we do, really, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And I know like and when we watch like a professional sports game, like if you watch a football game and and we're just watching like the scores and the plays, but you know, I think we forget a lot about what's actually going through all these athletes' heads and all the, you know, the the the, the challenges that they're going through. What is your idea and understanding of spirituality? Yeah, I you know, for for it was, you know, spirituality, it's it certainly has evolved for me over time. I, I grew up in a very uh Catholic family, in a very Catholic neighborhood in a very Catholic uh, city. <laughs> and so for me, yeah. <laughs> very, it was a very narrow, you know, uh, a view, I guess you could say of, of spirituality. But, um, you know, now that I've, you know, you know, moved beyond my hometown and uh, have been out there some more, I like it, it, it's certainly like broadened to me where, you know, our, our spirituality is, you know, for me, something that, you know, is just, you know, connecting with, you know, um, connecting with God. And at the same time, uh, you know, just honoring everyone else's path as well, whatever, whatever that may be. But, um, you know, it's, I, I, I think one of the biggest, you know, causes, so to speak of, 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 of suffering is, 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 is separation, you know, thinking that, you know, my way is, the way and that person's way is, is the wrong way and, and so forth and and labeling you know this this type of person and the, this type of person is that and so for me spirituality is just remembering this uh this connection that we have with not just everyone else out there but also the with nature and the entire universe what do you love most about being in a human body i guess it's the i wouldn't say this years ago but now i would is is is, is the vulnerability you know, knowing how, how fragile. And I think for years ago, I was probably more scared about that when I was starting to get, uh, injuries. And I realized like my body couldn't do what it used to do, um, after sports. But I think now it's just, you know, the vulnerability and the, the fragility just makes me, I guess you could say, just, you know, appreciate every single day and, and try to be more, uh, appreciative of every single moment as well. How do you define freedom? What is to be free to you? Mm -hmm. Freedom. I think freedom is to be at least aware of when our mind goes towards towards negativity. Um, I know for me personally, you know, sometimes I can, you know, get stuck in in the past or, uh, you know, negative thought patterns. But when I'm at least aware that I'm going there and I'm able to then make the shift towards positivity and, you know, gratitude, compassion, then I feel like that is that that's freedom for me. Let's talk about your work. And my first question for this section is, how did you become a writer? And what was the intention of writing your book? The point after how one resilient kicker learned there was more to life than the NFL. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So I I became a writer I guess it was about about 10 years ago, uh, my wife and I decided we, we own um, a few yoga studios in Pittsburgh called Amazing Yoga. And about 10 years ago, we decided to write a book together. I guess you could say like a how-to to help people get into yoga. And, and, and we just like gave the basics. Uh, then about uh, eight years ago, I, I wanted to write a second book. And the idea was instead of like a, like a how-to book, um, because there's a lot of that out there in yoga. I thought that because my my journey to yoga and my journey to meditation is more unique uh, in terms of 
you know, I was probably one of the last people that would ever get into yoga, uh, being an athlete, um, a male, and I was just very, very resistant to it. So the idea was I, I could write a book with, with my, my journey, my insecurities, and then eventually like my doubts towards yoga. Uh, and then you know, hopefully somebody would find, you know, somewhere in the book where they could relate to, and, you know, maybe they get into yoga, maybe not, but the, the other hope of the, of the, of the story was just to, you know, share, um, you know, some of the challenges and like how I felt, you know, how I felt like, you know, life was always about thinking it was going to go this way and having it all figured out and being okay with certainty. So it wasn't just to help people to get into yoga and meditation, but also to help people feel like they're not alone when they go through these points in their life where they feel like everything should be structured, like with the beginning of their life, the middle, the end. And when sometimes life doesn't go the way it's supposed to, that, it, that it's okay. Why did you choose the title, The Point After? What does it mean exactly? Yeah, so, so The Point After, well, it had a couple of meanings. The, the first one was uh, when I played in the NFL, I actually only scored one point. And w when a team scores a touchdown, afterwards, the kicker comes on, he kicks uh, the extra point, but it's also commonly known as The Point After. So it was a basically a play on words that I scored one point in the NFL. That was it. But the story or, or, or the big message in the book was that there was more to life than the NFL. So the, the whole point of the book was, was that, that there's, that there's more to life. And then the actual, the true point after came um, with all the lessons that I learned once my NFL career was over. Yeah. Talk to me about this idea of failure. Most of us don't even try a lot of times because we are afraid to fail. So what is your understanding of failure these days? Did that change? Do you have a new perspective after everything you've been through? Yeah, I, I would say that just, you know, I, I still fail a lot in my business. <laughs> I still <laughs> fail a lot in my day-to-day uh, my, my -day life. I think it's just, you know, understanding that like failure is going to happen. And I think if we, if we don't put ourselves out there, if we don't take chances, you know, we, we, we may not fail, but then we're not, you know, we're not, not moving forward. So I think it's just, it's being okay to fail. But, you know, I, when I was going through my NFL career, I was, I was cut, I was let go multiple times by NFL teams. And at the time it feel felt so, so horrible. Like that was it. Like that was like the worst thing that could happen to me. But as I kept trying, kept pushing, and even though I'd keep failing, you know, once I look back, I was so glad that I did that because I, I, I took a chance. And so, um, you know, my wife and I still do that in our, in our business. Now we still take chances and we, 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 we still make like lots of mistakes, but, um, I think there's that quote from, I think it's Einstein where, you know, if we're, we're, we're never going to make any mistakes if we never try anything new. And so, you know, by, you know, constantly trying enough things new, yeah, things may not go my way sometimes the way I want them to, but, you know, eventually if I keep you know, taking these risks that, you know, something is, is ultimately going to work out. I'm wondering if we can balance, find somehow a balance where we can avoid making mistakes. Do you think that by learning from other people like yourself is one of the ways to avoid that? Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. I think it's always good to look at like uh, best practices, so to speak, and to use uh, people who are maybe in a similar field as us or some that we resonate with or someone we look up to, 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 you know, study and see what they've done, you know, that that's worked out for them. What would you say to young kids who are aspiring to become football players? That's their dream. What would you say to them? Mm, yeah, so I, I, um, that's such a great question. You know, the, the, um, it, you know, I, I think it's, you know, these days it's, you know, youth sports has become far more complicated than it was, you know, back when I was playing. There's a lot more pressure coming from. Uh, adults, you know, parents pushing kids to play year round, to uh, specialize in a, in a specific sport. Uh, there's all these, you know, expensive travel clubs that, you know, a lot of parents and kids feel like they need to be a part of, but it, it's still 
I still think it makes a lot sense, a lot of sense to to practice some sort of balance and moderation. So I think if they have a dream of being a professional football player, it's to you know not play year round, you know play other sports. Uh, because if they start to play year round and they they push themselves and they're constantly training in that one sport, eventually they're going to burn out, most likely physically and mentally. And it seems to be happening a lot of uh, you know quite often these days, more than it than it used to. Where uh, you know athletes once they get to high school or college, they just they just give up. You know, and it's it's and some really they're giving up. Excuse me, they just they they step aside because they've just. They've they they burned out. So I think it's just you know like anything in life, like just just keeping a balance and 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 it's okay to rest. It's okay to you know not be on all these teams, these travel teams, and and to keep whatever sport you're doing, whether it's football or anything. Keep remember that it's just a game and it's just for fun. And 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 that you know if it ever seems like it's not, maybe it's time to just back off a little bit or maybe even a lot. Do you talk this way to your kids too, in the same manner? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I do, and you know I don't know if I really have to talk to them so much, you know, because of, of what I learned. I've we my, my wife and I we are very we we don't push our kids at all for sports, and you know they they all four of them have played sports, um, but you know we've never signed them up on the travel teams, and you know they've all still you know the ones that really like sports are still you know they do really well in it, but they. Uh, we encourage them to do other sports and that's, that's so far, that's what they're doing. So, <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah. So let's talk for a moment, Sean, about yoga, meditation and mindfulness. Yoga. What is that about yoga that is so healing? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it, it's so fascinating yoga. You know, you've, I've been doing it for 20 years now to me. And I, I think it's because most people, including myself, are first drawn into it for the physical benefits, whether they, they want to get past an injury or, uh, you know, they want to lose weight or, um, you know, build strength. And that's how I initially got into it. And so it works for that. I mean, there's study upon study how yoga helps heal the body, heal the back. But I think the true healing that comes from, from yoga and meditation is, is what it can do for the mind. Uh, you know, when I, when my career ended, I spent a lot of time living in the world of, I guess you could say like, if only, and I had tons of regret and I used to think, well, if only I, I did this, I would still be playing or, or I wouldn't be hurt. And then I also would spend a lot of time in the future, which was, what am I going to do in the future? And I had no idea. And I was terrified of, of what I could do next. But then my wife, after quite a bit of poking and prodding, she got me to start taking her yoga classes and what yoga gave me, which I had, had no idea existed, which was was to just be with myself and breathe. I was always pushing and pressing and thinking and thinking and thinking that, you know, this yoga practice, which was so unique um, in terms of, of, of what it did for me, which was just, you know, step out of the busyness, you know, you know, be in some place for the same same place, the same, you know, for 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 an hour, hour and a half of just breathing, paying attention to what my body felt, um, that I found over time that it was, that it was very healing for, for my mind and it helped change my perspective on how I looked at things. So instead of looking back at my football career as a failure, my mind began to shift and, and how I looked at that. And that was like, Oh, it was, it was something I need to learn. And then, then it began to help me, uh, you know, look at things differently that were happening also in the present moment, instead of getting, uh, being more reactive, you know, I, I noticed myself becoming calmer. So, uh, and, and everyone's experience in yoga can, can be different. There's, there's healing in different ways, but, um, there, it, it just allows, allows us to just, you know, just, just to step out and, and, and get that headspace that can, that can be so healing. Why do you think yoga and meditation even attract women more? Or perhaps women are more attracted to them than men. Mm. I, 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 I <laughs> my, my theory is, is that men have, they think doing yoga is, is unmanly and that it's, it's not macho enough. And, um, it's, it's, it, 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 it that it doesn't, uh, you know, versus like, you know, going to the gym and lifting weights or something like that. 
And so I think that's a big problem or, or one of the main reasons. I also think that men um, in general uh, are afraid to go to a yoga class or they have concerns about going to yoga class because of that they won't be able to keep up um, with the woman. And that's just, that's just, <laughs> that's just my personal thought on it. And, um, and, and I know that's actually, at least for me, that's that that, that that was true. That was, you know, when I when my wife was trying to get me into yoga, I just felt like, well, this wasn't this isn't macho enough. You know, I'm going to I'm just going to keep right. <laughs> to the gym. And then when I did go to my first yoga class, it was I was the only man in the class and I was in the back and there was 20 women. And when class began, it was obvious to me that I couldn't keep up with all of them. So I figure, well, if I'm going that I'm, I'm guessing a lot of other men go through that as well. And, you know, I do talk to, you know, to men and try to get a lot of men to come into yoga and it's definitely becoming more mainstream. Now, the conversations I used to have, I would have to explain yoga to everybody about, and I would try to make it sound, um, you know, maybe talk it up some more where it would be more appealing to men. But now it, it's that conversation I've noticed has shifted, you know, and luckily it's because of people like, you know, LeBron James does yoga, um, you know, Kobe Bryant did yoga. And so luckily we're having people like that, that men can be, you know, Dan Marino, the, you know, the Dolphins quarterback did yoga. So now I think that they've helped uh, remove that barrier, but it's still there. Like in our classes right now, when we first opened our studios, 20 years ago, there was probably, you know, for every 20 people in class, there was maybe one, one guy. And now it's more, um, for 20, there's maybe five. So it's, 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 it's changing. <laughs> so is there a connection between yoga, meditation, mindfulness, and compassion? Yeah. Well, I, I, I like to think of yoga and meditation really being the same where they're both a practice of of, of growing our awareness, but the one difference being meditation is something that's usually done, maybe seated, um, or something that's done more still versus yoga is more of a, a, a moving meditation and, you know, mindfulness, I believe can encompass both of those where while we're practicing yoga, we, we can be more mindful, such as, you know, maybe not moving so violently in and out of the poses. And the same with meditation where we can practice being mindful. So if I'm practicing meditation and all of a sudden in my mind, I start to uh, say to myself self-sabotaging thoughts, but then my mindfulness kicks in. I'm aware of that. And then I'm like, okay, so my meditation, I'm, you know, I'm just practicing this mindfulness within it. So to become aware of it. So there's, there's certainly a lot of overlap, but I think they all fall under that, under the, uh, the idea of bringing mindfulness into everything that we do. Do you also teach meditation and yoga to kids, to children? Yes. Uh, well, I don't personally, but um, yes, we do have teachers who who do for sure. And and you know that's one thing that we've seen a huge shift in too. When we first opened our studios, there was the age range was twenty and over, but now our studios have thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen year olds coming in. So it's it's mm -hmm. interesting to see how yoga is expanding because. For a while there, you know, yoga wasn't considered cool for for teenagers, but and, and college students. But now it's it certainly has made great in, inroads to that uh, to to the younger younger generation. We are almost at the end, Sean. Would you like to add anything or read a passage in your book before I ask you my final questions? Oh well, yeah. Maybe the only thing I could think of is is, is you mentioned compassion. I think I forgot to, to to answer that. And I I think where they where they really overlap is 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 compassion can be brought into all those practices, and specifically in in yoga. You know, we always encourage our students to just you know kind of notice what comes up, the type of thoughts that come up while they're practicing yoga. And you know, we like to look at it as when we practice yoga, as we're actually practicing living. So you know, while we're practicing. Mm -hmm. Our yoga, just being mindful and aware of like what type of thoughts or, or words that we're saying to our own body, and 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 we believe like, you know, you know, practicing, you know, forgiveness, compassion. It all starts with practicing that on ourselves. And so, if we can hone that skill with ourselves, then we'll be much better at doing it with others. So, if I'm practicing yoga, but I'm um, I'm critique, critiquing my body, you know, saying words like, you know, like, oh, your body's washed up, it's all beat up, then I'm not being very compassionate. But if I can practice shifting 
that mindset. Whereas, you know, just being really grateful that I'm here and even though my body can't move like it used to, but I'm just lucky to be alive and be able to be on this yoga mat and move Then this compassion. I can, I can begin to strengthen that almost as if like, um, you know, compassion is like a muscle, something that, you know, we can, we can train and get stronger and stronger. What was the hardest lesson to learn about yourself in life as of now? Mm, I, I, I think the hardest lesson was, was the relationship I had, had with my body. I, I, I felt, you know, for many years that, you know, that I was invincible, that I could, I, I could always get stronger, but I think, when you know the after having multiple injuries in in the nfl and when the last one was was when like put my put put it put it over the top for me where i could could not play anymore was this idea that you know it's what i can do with my body and you know uh you know you know the idea of of, of vanity and i believe that was something that i struggled with that i always wanted to be stronger and i wanted my body to look a certain way so i could you know, help accomplish this goal in the NFL. When I, when I realized that like it wasn't that, that, that didn't matter, that, that, that wasn't important that just, you know, being able to, you know, uh, you know, be here and, you know, have a body and be able to just do basic things. I think that was like the biggest, the biggest lesson for me to be able to, to let go of that whole idea of, of having this, um, you know, physical body that, That, that I wanted to be a certain way and that, that, that it was not as, you know, of course, like to be healthy, to have a healthy body, but that I didn't have to like spend that much time on the, I guess you could say the vanity part of my body. If you were to relive your own life, would you become a football player again? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. It, it, I'm, I'm really grateful that my career w went the way it did, you know, w when, you know, when I was 25 and I had to hang up the cleats, I, I really thought that was like the worst thing possible. But, it, you know, if, if I would have been more successful and if I wouldn't have had the injuries and I would have played till I was, let's say 40 years old, you know, so many things could have changed, you know, um, you know, with my family, um, you know, what I'm doing now, because who knows, you know, what I would have ended up finding after that. But, you know, I look back and I feel, I feel really lucky. I'm glad it ended when it did. And I'm glad that I, uh, you know, in some ways beat up my body because now I've, I've learned about that. And now I've been able to, you know, now with, with my new career, be able to, to share, um, you know, what, what I've learned through, through, through teaching yoga. So I feel very, very lucky to be able to do that right now. And my last question to you is, what are three things about life you know for sure as of today? Three things I know for sure. Well, I think that the first one is, 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 is our ability to love. You know, I, I think that is something that it's, it, it took me a while to get to that point. You know, I used to be pretty, pretty closed down in terms of, of sharing, um, you know, myself and, and uh my feelings and so forth so i i just know that you know once once i was able to get past to it like you know just you know you know the ability to love is is there for for everyone uh the second thing is that each one of us has this unlimited capacity to to be compassionate not just to ourselves but to others and also um uh gratitude but i think um you know we can have a limitless uh, um amount of gratitude And I think that all of those are, are, are skills that we can practice. I think we can, pra like if we practice on a daily basis, whatever it is, just through, uh, you know, maybe like a mantra practice of, of, of telling ourselves to be grateful or meditation practice or whatever it is, just, you know, practicing, reminding ourselves to be more grateful each day, reminding ourselves to be more compassionate, that when we do that, then we increase our capacity to, to love more. So those, those would be the three for me. Thank you so much for sharing your authentic presence, beautiful message, and your wisdom. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. I really appreciate you, you having me on. It was, it was fun. Thank you. Where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? Oh, sure. So my, my website is, is seanconley.net, S-E-A-N-C-O-N-L-E-Y.net. And on there, um, there's a variety of links to, uh, to purchase uh, the point after if you're interested. 
And also there's all kinds of resources for yoga, meditation, there's videos and there's blogs about if you're just looking to get interested. So it's got all like a whole variety of, of, uh, of resources out there. Thank you so much again, Sean, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Sean Conley and his work, please visit seanconley.net. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.